I've had this job at the place where they bury people for a long time now, about 15 years. Most of the time I work when it's dark out, from 11 at night to 7 in the morning. To me, working when everyone else is sleeping feels better than working when the sun is up. When the sun is up, there's a lot going on. More folks come by to visit their loved ones who have passed away. Sometimes there are even ceremonies where they bury someone new. These ceremonies need some planning and work. But one of the cool things about working when it's dark, I get paid a bit more, like $2 extra every hour. Over the years, I've seen many things happen. Often I'd spot young folks trying to scare each other or just having fun. Sometimes I'd even find groups of friends, maybe they've had a bit too much to drink, daring each other to walk around. But tonight felt different from all those nights. I reached my little work building earlier than usual. I had a chat with the guy who works when the sun is up. We talked a bit, and after he went home, I began my usual tasks, making sure everything was in order. Most of my work at night is to ride around in a small car, kind of like the ones they use in golf. I just have to check if everything's quiet and peaceful. Honestly, most nights are very quiet. I might find something odd or out of place once a month, or even less. My night started off as usual. I did a few rounds, then took a break to have some food. I remember it was close to two in the morning when I headed out again. While driving to the far end, I noticed a shadow by the boundary fence. Because it was super dark, I could only make out the shape. It looked like someone was standing there. I drove a bit closer to see better. It was a man. He was outside the fence and seemed to be staring at me. I didn't feel like going up to him and asking what he was doing. So I thought I'd drive away for a bit, circle around and see if he'd try to jump over the fence. But when I came back, just half a minute later, he had vanished. I quickly looked around, thinking maybe he had snuck in while I wasn't looking. But everything seemed okay. So I just carried on, riding through the place. I take about 15 minutes to check the entire area. Sometimes I drive slow, especially when I want time to go by faster. After my round, I decided to go back to where I saw the man, just to make sure everything was alright. I mean, it's not like I had much else to do, so I kept on driving towards where I had seen the shadow. Soon enough, I saw the man again. This time he was inside, standing on the path made of small stones. I got closer with my little car, but the man didn't even flinch. I decided it was best to get out and talk to him. Up close, he looked around 40 years old or so. Hey, you shouldn't be here. You need to leave, I told him. But he didn't even turn his face to see who was talking to him. After a few moments, I felt a little scared. Hey, you really need to go, I said, reaching out to touch his shoulder, hoping to get his attention. But the moment I did, he quickly turned to look at me. His eyes were angry, almost scary. Quickly I moved my hand away, and the man, without saying a word, began walking in the opposite direction. I hopped back onto my little car, thinking about calling the cops. I watched as he went all the way to the fence, climbed over, and just walked off. I was a mix of relieved and still scared. I drove back to my tiny work building. It's just one room, mostly for security stuff. But being inside felt safer. I took a moment to breathe. I had never felt like this before. Usually it was just folks playing pranks or something, but this felt way different. After some time, while still inside, there was a loud bang on my door. I was startled and looked straight at the door, worried. Soon, another loud bang came. It wasn't the kind of knock you'd expect from a friend. I felt trapped. Panicking, I grabbed the phone from the desk and called the emergency number. I didn't know what was going on, but I wasn't going to wait around to find out. After what felt like hours, but was probably just a few minutes, the banging stopped. I heard some footsteps walking away. Even then, I didn't dare open the door until the police got there. The next day, my boss showed me the video from the security camera. It was so creepy. Just a little while after I got into the building, the same man showed up at the door. He just stood there, not moving. For what seemed like forever. Nearly 15 minutes. And he had something in his hand. The video wasn't super clear, but it looked like he was holding a small metal pipe or a stick. We never found out who he was, and even though it was scary, 
I still work there, driving around in the night. Thankfully, I haven't seen him again. I had been working at the local gas station during nighttime hours for about 12 months. It wasn't a fancy job, but it helped me cover my small expenses. Every day felt like the same, with me doing the same tasks over and over. To be honest, I often thought about giving up and looking for another job. One particular night made me seriously reconsider staying there any longer. On this night, everything seemed pretty normal at first. I had just wiped down the gas pumps and had restocked some snacks and drinks on the shelves when I noticed the lights from a car approaching. The car itself looked old and worn out, and its windows were so dark that it was hard to see inside. The car stopped at one of the pumps, and the driver's side door opened. Out came a man, probably about 35 years old, with messy hair. He was dressed in a worn-out black jacket, and his face looked tired, like he hadn't had a good night's sleep in ages. When he walked into the store, I put on a friendly face and said, Hey there, anything I can assist you with? Instead of answering, he just dropped a $20 bill on the counter without a word and headed back out to his car. To be honest, this wasn't too unusual. Many late night customers just want to get in and out quickly without much chat. So I shrugged it off. As I stood by the cash register, I kept glancing outside to see the man at his car. Oddly enough, even though several minutes had passed, he was still standing there, hose in his car. Given that he had only paid for 20 bucks worth of gas, I knew he should have been done by now. After watching him for a bit longer and feeling a bit worried, I decided to step outside and check on him. Hey, is everything okay? I called out. But the man just got into his car swiftly and sped off without a word. Feeling a bit puzzled, I returned to my station inside. The night continued to be strangely quiet, with no other customers coming in. This eerie silence was making me more uncomfortable by the minute. Just as I was about to distract myself with some cleaning, I suddenly heard a noise. It was coming from the back of the store. The sound was distinct, like a cardboard box that had been knocked over. What was going on? I picked up a small flashlight and carefully started heading to the back part of the store. Each step felt heavy and I tried to be as quiet as possible. When I rounded the corner, I got quite a shock. There was a man, tall and quite thin, rummaging through our boxes of stock. He looked dirty, like he hadn't had a bath in a long time. I stopped, my heart racing, unsure of how to react. Then he turned his head and noticed me. We just stared at each other for what felt like a very long time. After what felt like forever, he began to approach me keeping his gaze firmly on mine. Backing up a bit, I raised my hands, showing him I didn't want to fight. But he kept coming closer. As he got nearer, the smell of alcohol became stronger, telling me he'd had a lot to drink. What's the cash at? He slurred, making it clear he was after money. My eyes quickly darted to a sharp-looking knife he was holding. Given how he seemed unsteady from drinking, the threat felt even more serious. I nervously pointed to the cash register and he motioned for me to move there. While I was getting the money out, he seemed distracted and went over to where we keep the alcoholic drinks. He carelessly shoved a bunch of pricey bottles into a big bag he had, then made his way back to where I was. I handed over the cash we had, which was just a little over a hundred bucks. He glanced at the money, then glared at me. This all you got? I wanted more. Clearly he wasn't happy, but I had given all there was. Suddenly, he swung his knife around and shouted, making me fear for my life. Just when I thought he would attack, he grabbed the money and ran out. Breathing heavily, I peeked out the window and saw the old car from before. The man hopped in and sped away. Luckily, I had hit the emergency alert while he was stuffing bottles in his bag. The police arrived soon after, but didn't have much to offer at first. But there was a silver lining. The security cameras outside managed to capture the car's license plate. A few days later, I got news that the police had arrested the men. Turns out, they were living on the streets and had stolen that car. Their plan was to hit as many stores as possible, taking cash and alcohol. It was a relief to hear they were caught, especially after finding out they'd hurt another store worker on their spree. A short while after all this happened, 
I decided to leave that job and find something during daytime hours. I just felt safer that way. When I got to the second floor, I slowly walked down the corridor, trying to figure out where the noise had come from. The lights on this floor seemed dimmer than usual, which didn't help my already heightened anxiety. The hotel's old carpet muffled the sound of my footsteps, which was a good thing, because I didn't want whoever or whatever was making the noise to know I was coming. Then I heard it again, the same loud banging. It was coming from room 204. That was the room I had given to the man with the bloodshot eyes. I took a deep breath and approached the door cautiously. I could hear faint mumbling from inside. It sounded like the man was talking to himself. This situation felt strange, and I wasn't sure if I should knock or call the police. I decided to put my ear closer to the door, trying to hear more clearly what he was saying. But his words were jumbled and didn't make any sense to me. It was like he was speaking in a mix of whispers and loud, disjointed sentences. Suddenly there was a moment of silence, and then a louder bang, as if something had been thrown against the door. I jumped back in surprise, my heart racing. The quiet of the hotel was suddenly shattered by a scream from inside room 204. It wasn't the man's voice. It sounded like a woman, but I hadn't seen any woman with him. Taking a deep breath, I took a few steps back and considered my options. I could call the police, but they might take time to arrive. I didn't want to leave whoever was in that room in possible danger. Then I remembered. The hotel had a security guard named Tim. He was an older, strong guy and would be finishing his rounds in the parking area. I decided to go find Tim and bring him back with me. Maybe together we could handle the situation. So I made my way quickly down the stairs and out to the parking area. The cold night air hit me immediately, making me shiver, but I was determined. Tim? I called out, my voice echoing in the near empty parking lot. As I looked around, I noticed a faint glow coming from behind one of the cars. I walked over and found Tim sitting there, smoking a cigarette. He looked up, surprised to see me. Hey, he said. What's going on? I quickly explained the situation to him, and we both hurried back inside the hotel. As we approached room 204, the noises had stopped. Tim and I exchanged worried glances. We were about to find out what was really going on inside that room. Walking down the hallway, I could feel the silence wrap around me like a cold blanket. I reached the door that was slightly ajar. Knocking lightly, I waited for a response, but there was none. With caution, I pushed the door open a little more and peeked in. The room looked untouched, like no one had been in there at all. I hesitated for a moment before shutting the door. As I did, I took note of the room number, 112. This was the very room I had assigned to that man. I had this unsettling feeling in my stomach. I hadn't seen him leave the hotel, and it struck me as odd that he'd just disappear like that. Making my way back to the reception, I glanced at all the security camera screens. He was nowhere to be seen. The feeling of unease grew. Out of the blue, the sharp ring of the phone broke the silence. It startled me, making my heart race. It was coming from one of the guest rooms. When I answered, a woman's voice trembled on the other end. She told me there was a man knocking on her door in the dead of the night. My heart sank. Apologizing to her, I promised to handle the situation. But before I could even set the phone down, it rang again. This time, it was another guest. A man from a different room, with the same story. Fear gripped me. Who was this man? And why was he knocking on guests' doors? I knew I had to call for help. I quickly dialed the police and waited, keeping an eye on the front door in case I needed to bolt. The police arrived in no time, but there was no sign of the mysterious man. In his room, however, they found a window smashed open. It was shocking to think he could have jumped from such a height without hurting himself. But what confused me even more was how he vanished without a trace. The plot thickened when the police discovered that the credit card he'd used to pay for the room was reported stolen. There were so many questions. What was he planning? Why was he knocking on doors? What did he want? All I could think of was how relieved I was that none of our guests had opened their doors. The outcome could have been far more sinister if they had.